Over the past couple of days, Bitcoin has been falling. And a question that I keep seeing in the comment section is, what should we be buying right now? Should we actually think about selling? When should we start panicking? And what's the slightly longer term strategy? Long story short, Bitcoin got rejected at 72,000 and is right now trying to find its footing. And as you've probably seen throughout the past couple of months, the moment that Bitcoin falls down, so in this case here, it wasn't able to breach 72, broke down, and at that point, I think we got rejected there like three or four times. The moment it got rejected is usually a moment where all coins do a significant amount of bleeding. There's a couple of coins that are you know, outperforming right now, one of which is a coin I just made a video on, Ton Coin. But perhaps, I, I, don't, I don't know if you even released that video. But if we take a look at the opposite side, many of the best performing altcoins of like a few weeks back, a few months back, are all now bleeding. And even if we take a look at the, right here, the weekly performance, nearly everything is just garbage right now. It's just really, really crazy. Well, it's not crazy in the sense that it's unexpected. We all know the cycle, we all know how it works. And in the earlier phases of a bull market where we're, you know, right now we're still very much so in phase one. Again, phase one out of the four is like 80% of the bull market. Then all of a sudden, like the two to four goes very, very quickly and very exponential. It's just a matter of being able to wait out phase one, but this time it's slightly different. And the reason I'm saying it's different is because first of all, if we're taking a look at Twitter, meme coins, for example, there are many top signals, which you usually don't see this early into the cycle. And the reason I'm saying this early into the cycle is because usually Bitcoin would have only hit its all time high somewhere around, let's say, September. But now it hit an all time high when like March or maybe even before that, maybe even I don't even remember when it was at least a good chunk before the halving, which was odd. But following that time frame, the fact that we hit an all time high, and then a few months later, we saw a lot of euphoria, because some mainstream influences are coming in, coming in with, hey, I want to make a token, I want to make a token, and they all start exit scamming, and they put up crazy memes. Usually that's where things start crumbling back down, which is why I always say meme coins are what usually brings a bull market into fruition. And usually also is what ends a bull market because people get too greedy and too crazy. And at some point, there's such a big scam or collapse that it takes so much money out of the ecosystem that other coins just don't pump as much. Anyway, so what is our strategy right now? As I said before, since we are in one of the earlier phases of the bull market, I personally don't think it's wise to really go for some of these crazy altcoins just quite yet. Many influencers will tell you, oh, you should buy this and that and this altcoin right now. I'm not. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because most people probably have a ton of tokens in that altcoin, right? And I'm not talking about like a top 10 or something. If you're, you know, preparing yourself for the new leg up with some of these top, top, top cryptos, completely fine. Very often, those actually get a better return if we're talking about a rebound, which could happen you know, as early as a few hours uh, than, than Bitcoin. I'm talking about coins that are not in the top of the top, but way further down the rankings, you know, some you know, bull market picks. And, and the reason I'm saying don't go for that now is because if Bitcoin keeps going slightly lower or sideways, most of those altcoins will bleed way harder. Meaning, yes, from a risk reward perspective, to explain it, there's more reward if it goes well, but the risk is so high that your ratio is not as nice as with a Bitcoin or a bigger altcoin where with Bitcoin, we know the probability of a reversal is extremely high and we know it will do okay. It will, it will, it will be a good bounce, especially if you're using something like Bybit with leverage, but let's say you skip that. We know it will be a solid bounce, just not the craziest of gains. So risk, extremely low, reward, medium. And then if you go to perhaps something like Ethereum, well, I'd say we have a similar sort of analysis as with Bitcoin. Only problem being, if Bitcoin keeps going sideways or down, Ethereum will bleed more. But the moment we see a bounce, I personally still think Bitcoin will kind of bounce first before altcoins. But the moment that altcoins go, Ethereum will also gain more. Point being, we can either look for lower points in Bitcoin right now as we speak, Keep buying our way down lower. So for example, set yourself targets every $5,000, 65, 60, 55, uh, you know, 50, 45, whatever. Every single time 
it gets that target, you buy a little bit more. It does not have to be DCA, dollar cost averaging. I personally think if you really want to play the best of games, you make sure that every single time you buy lower, you buy a higher quantity. But for a lot of people, that might be too stressful or too difficult. Let's say you wanted to always buy dips with like 100 bucks. Just make sure you keep buying $100 every single time it goes lower. And I'm not your financial advisor, but I'll tell you right now, most of the bots that I'm running, I've explained it on my trading channel, are doing exactly that. They're just buying their way down lower, all the way as low as $30,000, because I don't think we'll go below there. And that's like my worst case scenario. So that even if times are bad, it'll buy that dip right up. And then the moment it starts trending back upwards, I'll cash in the profit. Because at that point, you got to sell something to, you know, get some of your liquid monies back, you know, to get your liquidity back. Because otherwise, yeah, eventually you're going to want to buy altcoins and you want to prepare for perhaps another dip that might at some point happen. Here's, for example, one of the old bots that I cannot recommend anybody to use anymore because I've explained later on why you should probably go for a slightly different strategy. Uh, but the idea is as follows. It opens a position at, for example, 67,000. And every single time it goes slightly lower, it just keeps buying more and more and more Bitcoin so that at some point, you know, once it, it goes up a little bit in price, it can sell. And just so I quickly say it, the reason this bot is not so nice and why I use OKX for the most part link is also down below is because they have a max additions uh, on Bybit that you don't have on things like OKX. Meaning in this case here, you'd have to go for pretty big steps downwards. And in this case here, you can see it started at 67 and it ends at 65. You'd want it to go from 67 to probably like 43 or, or something along those lines. Because even though the liquidation price for this one, I think is like uh, 30,000, maybe something along those lines as well. Preferably you'd have buys that low. So the moment it goes to 30 and goes back up, perhaps even in some scammy wick, you know, where the price just goes down very hard within like a few minutes, which is also the risk of this strategy, but it can also be the good part. Uh, then obviously you'd want to have multiple layers down way lower than you expect to where to need it. But anyway, that's like my main strategy that you can do manually for sure. All it takes is just you sitting down for like 20 minutes, writing down where you want to buy at and then lower it down. You don't need any bot. You don't need any crazy strategy. Uh, there's also probably on the exchange you're using, there's a button somewhere that says, hey, I want to have layered buys. And the reason I am such a big fan of that is mostly because as long as you don't think the bull market's over, which I personally don't, um, then it's fine. The worst that's going to happen is like, oh, a few months of down. But even if we have a few months of down, I showed you this. I'll show you again. I, I got to keep opening up the receipts because I think a lot of people don't understand from just my words. I got to show it to them with real money. Example, uh, pour vous. So this trade we opened a extremely long time ago, at least October of 2023, obviously. Um, but it could be that it was actually way before that, perhaps even in April. It was a live stream at some point where I said, guys, should we open a $1,500 long or short? You guys said long. It was in a loss for a long time. But then I was like, ah, let's just leave it and look at where we are today, huh? Because my liquidation price was quite low. Let's say I open it, uh, for example, here back in April of last year. Well, the price went down a lot, but I did not get liquidated. I could keep the position open. And one entire year farther, because that is the idea you should be having, the price is above where we started at because it took some time, but right now we are significantly above where I bought at, even if it takes a year or whatever, you're gonna pay some funding fees, sure, but usually, if you're buying your way down lower, the profit that you make from the trade, because this trade, we put $1,300 in, and it's 17,000 in profit, and we have to pay 2,000 in fees, but usually it ends up being a very, very nice ordeal, a very nice value proposition. Um, again, as long as you're kind of not unlucky and your first buy was like right at the top. Even if it was, I'll tell you real quick, even if your buy was like right there, I can't, uh, here we go. Even if your buy was like right around there, the reason this strategy still works so nicely is because you'd, for example, buy right there, buy right there, buy right there, and then probably on this leg upwards right there, you could have already sold again. So even in the worst of positions, it would have taken you from, let's say here, November, to roughly March, so like three months. Ooh, quite annoying. You have to pay some in fees. But ultimately, this move back upwards was, let's check it out, could have been roughly 50% or so over that three-month period, maybe slightly less, but you understand the idea. In that 
time period, you could have definitely sold for profit again. And even if you missed it and you start it right there, so let's say you make your first buy right there, you bought lower, 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 perhaps one more lower, but let's say we skip that. Oh, it would have been quite annoying for August to perhaps let's say January. But then after that, again, the price started to go up. You could have probably sold here in March, so it took some time. But the point being, never in the history has the strategy that I'm telling you now not worked. And so the only question you should be having is, is that going to change? With altcoins, it's slightly different because some of them that I bought into crazy back in 2017, 18, for example, are dead now. They're gone. And so the reason I'm saying this is a Bitcoin strategy that will almost always work if you're doing this with altcoins, you have to analyze them more piece by piece, more anticipate of what the next cycle um, hype coins are going to be. RWA, I think. AI, I think. Perhaps gaming is going to make a recoup, but it's been bad. So I wouldn't go for gaming right now, even though last season it was really hot. You can say your layer twos, layer ones. Again, it's not been as hot. I would skip them for right now. But the almost certain bets are AI and RWA. Those are my main focuses. But that's, again, like I said, a little bit more tough. Because if you're buying them now, there's a good chance that if Bitcoin comes down slightly more and you're just buying the dip, that your position will be down so much that it could be too stressful. Ex everything I explained here will probably work for most altcoins as well. But on the mind, it's harder. And ultimately, the only thing that can flaw or that, that, that the only flaw, I guess, in this system is you not being able to handle it. You have to be able to handle looking at your screen Seeing if you open a $100,000 position, seeing minus 30, 40, $60,000 right there and knowing that soon enough, it'll be back in the green. A lot of people can't handle that, which is why a lot of people lose money trading because they let their head get in the way of, I should say, they let their heart get in the way of their head. Anyway, I can sit here talking about it for hours, but I think you guys understand what I mean, right? Just Bitcoin is pretty, pretty simple. Um, name your big altcoins, an XRP, a Solana, whatever you will probably get back up there in price and you'll probably flip for a profit go lower down the rankings some of those coins will die out some of those coins have bad vesting schedules some of them will only start going crazy at the end of the end of the end of the cycle and so you might be kind of more annoyed in the meantime where it might be harder again to hold it for you some might have crazy funding rates if you're doing this with leverage i should actually add one more thing by the way if you're doing whatever i described here i talked to you about fees right these fees fun fact you're actually getting paid to have these positions open as prices go down lower. It's actually only, mostly for the most part, that you're paying as prices are going up. Why is this? Funding fees, the way they work is generally speaking, let's say we have 10 people that are saying the price is going up and only one person that's saying the price is going down on this derivatives front, right? Well, to keep the price balanced with just the spot, so we just buy and sell without any contract, the people who are going with the flow, so to speak, you know, where the majority of people are at, they have to pay to keep that position open because otherwise too many people would do it, so to speak, making the price from the contracts deviate too much from the actual price. Again, this is just my oversimplified way of explaining it. So again, what they're doing is because there's too many people trying to go long, too many people saying, oh, price goes up and only a little bit saying price goes down. They're giving you a penalty for saying up and rewarding you for saying down. Again, the penalty or reward is mostly just in the cost of borrowing or sort of an interest rate given to you for lending out, so to speak. And so theoretically speaking, let's say most people are long, you know, price going up, funding rates will probably adequately also penalty those people, meaning you have to pay to keep the position open. But if you have a long position open, but generally speaking, the trend is down and all of a sudden the funding rate, by the way, is this little number right here. You pay it every eight hours. Anyway, so if you have the long position open and the price keeps going down, you actually get rewarded for it. So um, for anybody saying, oh, but I have to keep paying to keep it open. Eh, it's just something I wanted to put in your head. And then many people will say, Dusty, I can't use buy, but this, that, that. Use whatever you want to use. It's the idea that counts. You can literally do this if you're buying Bitcoin from a guy on the street. You don't need a special exchange for anything. All it takes is some discipline, buying your weight down lower. And some people will comment, oh, but I only want to buy XRP. Oh, I only want to buy Solana. The same exact principles apply. Just insert the altcoin that you know and love. As long as you think that at some point in the future, the price will be higher than it is right now, the only worry is opportunity cost, you know, the relative cost of whatever you're doing. Could you have better done it a different way? But in my own head, since almost nobody can time the bottom perfectly, it's better to buy your way down lower than to just buy where you think the bottom is. But that's just me.